vegetative propagation. In plants, the units of vegetative propagation such as runner, rhizome, sucker, tuber, offset and bulb are giving rise to new offspring. These structures are called vegetative propagules. Formation of these structures does not involve two parents. The process involved is asexual. Are you aware how plants like potato, sugarcane, banana, ginger and dahlia are cultivated? Determine the site of origin of the new plantlets in the plant shown. You will notice that they invariably arise from the nodes present in the modified stems of these plants. Onion is stem modification. Adventitious roots are grown from discoid in the soil. Adventitious buds arise from the notches present at margins of leaves of bryophyllum. This ability is fully exploited by gardeners and farmers for commercial propagation of such plants. Terror of Bengal aquatic plant water. Hyacinth drains oxygen from the water which leads to death of fishes. Introduced in India for its beautiful flowers and shape of leaves propagate at phenomenal rates spread all over water body within a short period of time. It is very difficult to get rid of them. Now let us see few examples of vegetative propagules in angiosperms. A. Eyes of potato. B. Rhizome of ginger. C. Bulbils of a gavy. D. Leaf buds of bryophyllum. E. Offset of water hyacinth. Rhizome. Modified stem growth horizontally. Distinct nodes and internodes are present with marked apical and auxiliary buds. Adventitious roots present at the ventral side. Example Ginger. Gingiber, turmeric, and curcuma, tuba, insulanum tuberosum, half moon like structures called eyes of potato. These eyes indicate the position of nodes and internodes. Scale leaves and auxiliary buds are present, apical bud is also present. Tubers have no roots. Example Solanum tuberosum, potato. Heliander, tuberosus. Onion. Underground stem modification. Adventitious roots grow towards the soil. Fleshy, scaly leaves, which are eaten, grow above soil, aerial. Auxiliary buds produce new plant. Apical bud shows inflorescence. Tunicate bulbs are seen in Allium sepa, onion. The imbricate bulbs are seen in Allium sativum, garlic. Corb. Underground stem modification grows vertically in the soil. Nodes and internodes present. Scale leaves arising at node. Apical and auxiliary buds are present. Auxiliary roots produce daughter roots. Corm shows contractile roots, which are helpful to put the corm in distinct depth. Example, Amorphophallus, Colocasia, etc. Artificial Vegetative Propagation a number of artificial methods are used to propagate plants in agriculture and horticulture. Some of these methods are layering, cutting, grafting and tissue culture. Let us discuss about these methods. Layering In this method a lower branch of a plant is bent down close to the ground 
and covered with moist earth in such a way that its growing tip remains above the soil surface. After a few days, the covered portion of the stem usually produces adventitious roots. The rooted branch is then cut and grown as an independent plant. This method is used to propagate plants such as jasmine and it occurs naturally in black raspberries. Cutting for cutting, we have to select a healthy young branch with a few nodes and internodes. Then cut off the branch and remove most of its leaves. Now the cut end is stuck into some good moist soil. Look at the cutting after some days. We can see that it develops roots and grows into a new plant. This method is used to propagate plants like rose, sugarcane and pineapple. The antheridium develops on the male gametophyte. Sperm form within the antheridium. The archegonium develops on the female gametophyte. An egg forms within the archegonium. Sperm are released from the antheridium and swim to the archegonium. Fertilization takes place inside the archegonium and a zygote is formed. The zygote divides by mitosis to form a new sporophyte in the form of a stalk and capsule. Life cycle of fern. The plant body of fern is divided into root, stem and leaves. Leaves are the only aerial part of plant body. Stem is represented by underground rhizome. Rhizome is densely clothed with numerous scales or rementa. Leaves are large compound and look like a branch, hence named as frond. Each leaf has a short stalk called petiole. The pinny develop on main stalk called rachis, which is the continuous of petiole. Leaflet with sporangia are known as sporophylls. Sporangium bears large number of spores. The sporangia are aggregated in groups called sorry. The spore is minute dark brown and tetrahedral in shape. The prothallus is green and heart-shaped. The prothallus lies flat on the ground and bears many unicellular rhizoids. 
on the undersurface, Antheridia and Archegonia are born. Antherozoids swim in water by their cilia. One of the sperm fuses with the egg to form a zygote. It covers itself with the cell wall and is called oospore. The oospore divides and redivides to form the embryo. However, with the development of green leaf and root and with the decay of prothallus, sporophyte develops into an independent plant body.